What is up, comic book fans? Welcome back. Was your New Year's resolution to read more comics? Because mine was. We are excited to have you here. But first, I have to ask you, have you read this yet? Welcome back, comic book fans. Happy New Year. We are excited to have you back for the uh, our newest episode of Have You Read This Yet? Uh, so join us. We have back again Allegra Jade Fox, artist, musician, all around amazing person, comic book enthusiast. So thank you so much for joining us again. Excited to have you back here. And also Asha Danielle, who's a major comic book fan and also spending this year reading some more comics. So very excited to have you both with us. So um, before we get into this discussion, because uh, we're doing something a little bit different, we're talking about web comics this time. Uh, I was wondering if you guys had a particular web comic that you like, enjoy, personal I favorite? I am obsessed right now with Olympus Lore. You can Ooh. look at it on Webtoon. Basically, if you are into any kind of Greek mythology, it takes place. Uh, it's around. It's around the story of Hades and Persephone, but Ooh. it's got a spin on it. And it is amazing because when they are in Olympus, it's modern. So they have cell phones, they have computers, but then when they go down back to Earth, it's actually still in Greek times because they have to wear the garments. And it focuses on really like tough topics. Like it's talking about being consensual. Yeah. You know, they were having this thing about emotional whiplash and just like, you know, being able to say no. But then at the same time, it's really cool to just like see what these characters would be like in modern times. It's dealing yeah. with like past trauma because the whole, a big thing about Hades is like being swallowed by his father and he yeah. actually still has PTSD from it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's intense. It is intense. so good. And it started about a year ago and it comes out every Saturday um, and it's getting good right now. So nice. if you start right now, I think if you go to Webtoon, download the app, start it now, and then you'll end up paying to look at stuff three weeks in advance like me, but that's okay. <laughs> but y'all need to watch, like y'all need to read it. Yeah. It's so good. Ah, it sounds awesome. Look, Asha, what about yourself? The webcomic that you've been I enjoying? I have not been indulging in webcomics that's right fair. now. Yeah. yeah. I, um, one of my favorite though, that was a webcomic mm. is Bayou. Oh, which okay. is just like this beautiful it's two it's two books right now but it is just this beautiful like homage to um i would say like black people in black history and it's about a little girl who um whose father is accused of um kidnapping a white girl and she goes on this journey to try to redeem him and it's in like the 1940s oh. um a lot of mythology a lot of things around um, just different figures in in black culture. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that actually turned into a printed document, but I would say that is that is my web series no, that I decided I to purchase well, I in love, the flesh. No, and I love the examples you brought up because I think a lot of people assume with web comics they're going to be kind of cutesy or short, and they can be, and that's wonderful, but I think people don't know that they can also be very deep and talk about very important things, um, which kind of gets us to the one that we're going to talk about uh, today, which is called Mom's Cancer. It's a heavy title, but bear with me. It's actually like wonderful and has some very light moments. So don't let this scare you away. It's wonderful. Um, but they, they, you know, we are getting into um, healthcare and what do you do when your loved one is sick. Um, so it gets into some intense things, which I think people don't assume web comics will do. But they go there and they handle it with a lot of like depth and heart. Um, so before we dive into our discussion, we want to make sure that you are caught up on the conversation as well. So check out our spoiler-filled review of Mom's Cancer right now. <laughs> There might not be anyone in capes, and maybe there's no supervillain. But we still have a team fighting to defeat an insidious enemy. It just happens to be a true story. This is Mom's Cancer. Mom's Cancer follows writer and illustrator Brian Fies and his family as they grapple with his mom's diagnosis. The web series works as a kind of diary. Fies calls it a kind of underground journalism, dispatches from the front lines of a battle which my family stumbled into unprepared. We're never given mom's name. Fies wanted to protect her privacy, but he also wanted it to feel like this could be anyone's mom. We start with some basics, like how to diagnose lung cancer. Step one, rent a bad movie and then lose feeling in half of your body. This starts a long and taxing journey through the world of cancer diagnosis and treatment. The treatments are laid out by doctors whose optimism hides the dismal survival odds for her type of cancer. Even getting to see the doctor at what's called the very impressive hospital feels like a stroke of luck. 
they only get an appointment through a literal game of telephone. Meanwhile, Fize and his sister struggle under the burden of caretaking, all of them stressed, scared, and tired. In one post, Fize describes the people he sees while he's out running errands. Young girls sunbathing, people smoking in their cars, and he becomes enraged. Here these people are, choosing activities that will land them right where his mom is, in the cancer ward. We also learn that cancer is only part of the problem. Fies describes the many concoctions his mom has to take. Blood thinners to prevent blood clots, steroids, blood thickeners. If the tumor doesn't kill you, so many other things might. But even in the middle of so much darkness, there are glimpses of light. Like a birthday party mom insists on having, and the puppy she keeps, aptly named Hero. <coughs> the story ends with mom beating her cancer. At the time, part of a small group to survive. She literally rides off into the sunset, planning to enjoy her remaining time in California. Her time there is short. She passed away six months after the comic went to press. Not from cancer, but from the stresses on her body from the treatment. But she was heavily involved in the comic from the start. Fize writes that nothing made mom more proud or happy than hearing from people who said they quit smoking because of her, or that her story had given them hope. At the end, Fize shares her name. He writes, her name was Barbara, and she lived and died well. This comic has some um, some interesting uh, stuff going on with it. It was the first digital comic to win the um, Eisner Award for Best Digital Comic. No one had ever won that award before. It was 2005 when it was given that. Lots of other awards as well. Um, but I was curious, um, what were y'all's initial thoughts? Initial thoughts on <laughs> on reading this one. It was just a lot to take in, honestly, just because I've had family members deal with that. And it was just like, especially like now, I guess, being older yeah. and having that, like, especially the arguments with the, the siblings. That was the yes. one that kind of like, you know, I don't want to say like brought it home to me, but almost, but it just kind of got the wheels turning, thinking mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, like, you know, I'm 30 years old and my parents are in their 60s now. And it's yeah. just that really scary thought of like now the tables are gonna turn. I'm gonna have to be the one that takes care of them. How do I deal with that and my, my siblings? And so that was like the thing. And I loved how like they were having like their fight, like being a superhero and the mm -hmm. brother's like, I read into this. And she's like, yeah, but I'm actually a nurse. I went to school for this. And the sister's yeah. like, the baby sister's like, I'm here, I'm here. I Why can't y'all see me? I wanna help. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, oh God, like I saw that with my mom and her siblings mm -hmm. when like my grandma had cancer and it was just like, now really understanding it as an adult, and that's what got me. Yeah, yeah. Asha, what about yourself? Yeah, I really liked it. I mm. really liked it overall. I've also had family members, very personal and close to me, who had cancer and had to be a part of their care, mm -hmm. and their advocates in the healthcare system. And what I appreciated most about the novel was showing the complexity, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think yeah. we hear this very, like straight narrative of what cancer is and there's a lot of like fight and advocacy for it mm -hmm. but also like people are mad and yeah. people are incredibly hurt mm -hmm. and you can still get mad at someone who has cancer because mm -hmm. you're frustrated there's a lot of things you have to do but there's yeah. still a lot of love there um so just the nuance was something that I deeply, deeply appreciated and it resonated with me. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say like the the reason that I wanted to do this one, we wanted we knew we wanted to do a comic that dealt with healthcare because uh, this uh, month on Decibel we're doing a lot of stories on in, uh, inequities in healthcare. So if you are interested in that, we got a lot more great content on the YouTube channel. There's a link right here, you can follow it. It's, it's great. <laughs> Uh, but but uh, we we knew that we wanted to to focus on that as a as a as a comic for this month and there was one panel in particular it's really early in and it almost looks like a game board and it's like stages to diagnosing cancer and it's somebody calls somebody and then well sister knows someone so she's gonna call someone else and then oh somebody knows some friend who somebody knew had cancer let's call them and it's this patchwork thing of like convoluted mess trying to get a doctor. And like that in particular, I was like, that, that is what ever, so many people struggle with, is just trying to navigate a very confusing system. And a lot of it just comes down to who you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, I remember, like, so I was misdiagnosed with lupus when I was 18, and um, 
it was this thing of like when the doctor said you need to go do additional work and all this other stuff I'm like two months out of about to go to college like mm -hmm. it was crazy and it was just a matter of getting on the phone and like yeah like what you said where it was kind of like he had somebody but my mom was like no like I want to go with somebody completely different and then my dad's looking up stuff and I'm just like shell-shocked like you know had no idea what to do and it's just like this thing of like okay who's this person who's this person we're gonna go with this person we're gonna go with this person we're gonna go get a second opinion and then finally you know we went to a family doctor my mom's like we're just gonna go to our family doctor we've had her for years and then she was like I know somebody you know, she, you know, she, you'll be her youngest patient, but mm -hmm. like, she'll be able to explain this to you. So I definitely was like, had like a flashback of like, you just, it's confusion. And then finally we're like, let's just go to a family doctor and just start from there. Mm -hmm. As silly as it sounds, just because you know me, yeah. you know the situation. And then we went to this person, got the second opinion and they're like, it's not like this, go to college. Live yeah. your life. <laughs> like, not, not oh that. Yeah. Misdiagnosed, just yeah. like live your life. So yeah, yeah, it was madness. And then finally it was like, just go to, let's just start from the scratch. So yeah. reading that, I'm like, nope, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that's like a lot of people can, can see themselves in that where it's just like so much trying to find someone who, who knows you or understands a problem or can just see you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The navigating. Exactly. Even with, yeah. Like not even including like the complexity of being insured or not and being yes. able to afford it, but just right. like finding someone, mm -hmm. needing to have a network. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so delicate. It's like, it's yeah. not like, oh, I just need a family doctor. It's like, I just got diagnosed with this serious, yeah. serious disease. Mm -hmm. Where do I go? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. want the best, exactly. hopefully, whatever that means. Exactly. Right. And it's like the yeah. best going to listen to you. Right, and at yeah. the time this was written, it's like the internet wasn't what it is now. Mm, yeah. It's like, I can't even imagine what you would do in 2020, where it's like yeah. you Google this and just pages and pages. Yeah. And if yeah. you got three other siblings doing that, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was just the thing, it's just like so confusing. But yeah, you're like, it was just like a like a weird game show of like, go this way, go this way. It was like mm. a choose your own destiny yeah. yes. kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Totally. And I think uh, another thing that stuck out to me too is just like, what if you know you didn't have a sister that was in the medical field? Or yeah. what if you didn't have another sister who happened to know someone who knew a doctor? It's just like, a lot of it kind of hinges on luck. Just you got lucky and someone knew somebody mm -hmm. and they were able to get you a number. And mm -hmm. like, that's, that's such a scary thing. And I think that kind of like hit home for me reading that where it was like, so much of your mom getting treatment and getting better in, throughout the series was just a phone call someone was able to, to you know, get you lined up with, which, yeah. which is crazy. And I think that that's not uncommon for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. and thinking about the privilege, right? Of yes. being able, like the author is white, the family mm -hmm. is white, and the fact that they had this network where the mom was able to access one of the top neurosurgeons yeah. in the field. I, I think they called it, was it very... Very important hospital. Very important hospital right, yes. was the code name for it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm really glad you brought that up. I did want to ask you about that. And it's, um, you know, obviously like the, the author was sort of like just writing out what was happening with his family. Um, and it's, you know, it's awful that his mom went through this, but mm -hmm. I wondered how the story would be different if it was a family of color as opposed to a white middle class family because the, the ideas of like who you can access is different. Uh, the way the doctors treat you might be different. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of different levels to that. And so I was kind of curious, and I'm glad you brought that up, but like when you were reading this, did that cross your mind? Like this would be different if it was a different family. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's, um, whether it is a family of color or even a family that's in a rural area that mm -hmm. doesn't have access to care. When I think back on my own um, experience with it, where it was like, you have a choice of one doctor. And what yeah. is, is that actually a choice if right. you have just one? Mm -hmm. But no, I mean, definitely thinking about one of the core things that the author left us with was you are an expert in yourself. Mm -hmm. and knowing that the mom who was white and the family is white struggled with that yeah. and thinking about people who are disenfranchised, mm -hmm. you know, at a micro level and at a systemic level, that is something that they are specifically taught is not true. Yeah. And then entering the medical field where mm -hmm. it's so convoluted yeah. and there's this, I mean, just like the language that people use. Dr. Harris. Yes? You concur. Uh, concur with what, sir? W with what Dr. Ashland just said. Do you, do you concur? Oh. Uh, or just saying that you have to do something without any kind of explanation. It's, yeah. I mean, it's already hard enough, and then add on yeah. these different identity factors would yeah. make it really difficult. 
Also, it's just like going back to like now in this day and age because it's like I don't want to say that this is dated. It's just like so much has happened in the year oh, 2020, absolutely. and it's like not even being a not only being a person of color, but it's like even you know even I feel like almost everybody has access to the internet, and yeah. I think because you wouldn't have that advantage of having somebody in the medical field, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You're going to Google your symptoms. Yeah. yeah, you're going to get into a forum that's going to misinform you. Yeah, yeah. you're going to have somebody that's going to say, oh, you don't need to do this you can do this, it's way simpler. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember reading something where this person just outright didn't want to do chemotherapy or radiation and they, mm -hmm. did, they tried to take a, 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 a more natural approach to it and they mm -hmm. died. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, that's the scary thing too, is that yeah. because if you aren't as educated or well informed or you're not talking to the right people, you can get looped into something completely different that yeah. would be more harm than good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, that's another disadvantage, especially yeah. if you just don't have that, you know, you, like you said with the rural areas, mm -hmm. like God knows, like, they're not going to go to the doctor or they don't have access to it or it's like right. it's too far away. I can't yeah. do this. I can't do that. If I miss this from work to go fly to very important hospital, yeah. I can't provide for my family. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like just there's just these little factors of like, you know, looking at it from a standpoint like this is your health. Yeah. But then again, it's like, oh, my God, if you don't have the privilege of having PTO or sick leave yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know, you are um, working on a farm out in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. it's like you're going to, I don't know, it's just, it's like you said, it's so convoluted, but I feel like nowadays people can honestly accident like just get into the wrong area yeah because it's like everybody thinks they're a doctor yeah mm -hmm. well I think it uh, it kind of ties in nicely whenever we meet uh, the the father who is you know not with the family or reactive with the family uh, but is still being kind of kept updated on what's going on mm -hmm. and then he the he finds out that oh the the mom has cancer and there's you kind of feel like they don't really go into a lot of detail but it kind of sounds like dad went and started a cult maybe they call me terrorist radical Zealot, because I obey the ancient laws of my people, the creed. A little bit, maybe, <laughs> possibly. Just in the ballpark mm -hmm. of that. But, um, but basically it's trying to like convince them like, oh, don't go see doctors, do a more at home uh, natural remedies. And they're like, no, no, it's like, it's in her brain. Like we need to do radiation. And he's like, no, I think that's a terrible idea. And it's like, that, that is sort of like the internet writ large. It's like, oh, no, this is a bad idea. Try these other things. And it's like, Maybe not. Maybe that's not a good option. Mm. Maybe maybe chemo and radiation, bad as they are, is, is the best option for you. But right. mm -hmm. I think that goes back to that point of, um, you know, that you know, it's not one dad on a phone call. It is an entire Reddit comment section. Like exactly. that's yeah, a it's, whole it's, other thing. It's a private Facebook group that you can see yourself in with yeah. like-minded individuals. Yes. And then it, you know, echo chambers are just the scariest thing that I think have come out in the last 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it doesn't take long for you to just get caught up in it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you think you're doing the right thing. But as I always tell people, I'm like, there's a reason why this doctor had to spend so many years. Yeah. So many years upon years upon years. Like, that's why it's still called practice. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I'm going to put this person, I'm going to make put my life in this person's hands before a Facebook group. But who's to say once you're scared mm -hmm. and you're desperate and what's more convenient, you're not going to accidentally fall into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like the whole dad, like I, it was infuriating. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm glad he was there because it's like, mm. especially now. Yeah. You know, anything that pops up, somebody's going to be like, oh, wait, no, you don't need to do this. Or like every yeah. time I pop aspirin. I read this thing. I read this thing. Yeah. You don't need to take aspirin. And I'm like, but I do. Yeah. Like I have a busted hip. Right. Well, no, if you do this, this, and this, no, I'm yeah. going to take aspirin. Mm -hmm. yeah. My doctor told me to take aspirin. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, like, and the author, and maybe it was also the mom at the afterwards, she mm -hmm. talked about, like, the need for holistic care, mm -hmm. which had to do with, like, her mind. What did her mind yeah, need as, right. as cancer and also the treatments, mm -hmm. which, you know, in reading this also resonated with me because they are... I mean, I, I absolutely appreciate like doctors and healthcare, but are also like still pretty archaic. A simple evacuation of the expanding epidural hematoma will relieve the pressure. My God, man, drilling holes in his head's not the answer. The artery must be repaired. Now put away your butcher knives and let me save this patient before it's too late. Yeah. Right, like yeah. for cancer treatment, you are killing everything. Yeah. Because you want to kill the cancer. And that is 
also destroying people and their bodies. So mm -hmm. also thinking about what does their mind need? What does their spirit need? And yeah. medical, the medical environment, the medical um, sphere has not necessarily been people-centered. Yeah. And so I can understand why people can right. go to the internet and they're looking for a community mm -hmm. and there are absolutely problems there. And I'm like, oh, they're also looking for some kind of agency, yeah. right? They're trying to like find something and they are the ones that are actually experiencing it that know it best, yeah. right? And can we also pair them with professionals yeah. who listen to them and go back and forth and like the mom had all of these questions yeah. and wanted to be able to say like, oh, my hip was hurt and they're like, why didn't you tell us? But then yeah. she's like, I had a splitting headache and they're like, yeah, that's it's fine. fine. Like that's one of the symptoms of it. Mm -hmm. To be able to navigate this thing that is complex and yeah. also removes you from yourself. There's yeah. something that needs to be a happy medium because I think mm -hmm. mental health talks have really come a long way in the last 10 years, yeah. especially in the last decade. Yeah. And like you said, that is something that needs to be brought up because you never, all you're thinking about is the physicality. And it's like if we could take both these worlds and find a happy medium, but both yeah. worlds refuse to talk to each other. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's almost like, I dare I say, both are archaic in their own sense, where it's mm -hmm. like, yes, I love the medical part of it, but at the same time you've become so robotic in your mm. responses because maybe you even have to do that that's a form of self-care for you sure. that like you don't want to get close mm. to these people but then at the same time there needs to be somebody that is trained to be able to do that but yeah. also will respect what medical professionals are doing mm -hmm. well I think it goes back to some, and I wanted to bring this part up too but there's a and I think it ties in nicely to y'all's points but there's a, a panel towards the end where I think she's going back in and there's gonna do like a final scan and see how things look and they're like oh it looks like everything's shrinking everything worked you're one of five percent who might make it and no one had said that to her before like mm -hmm. it's a five percent chance like that you survive like 95 percent of people don't live with this type of cancer and then they leave and all the kids are like okay this is great this is good news and she's just in tears because she's yeah. like I didn't know it was five percent and like, I think it ties back to that where it's just, there's a lot of focus, like you said, on what can we do to fix your body, but where is your heart at? Where is your mind at? Mm -hmm. And it's like that moment, you see how thin the hope was. Like it's on this very like finite space and she's trying so hard to be positive. Mm -hmm. And it's just that moment where it's like, there was a really good chance you were not gonna make it. And I think it, it did not hit home for her until that moment. And yeah. that was like one of the most heartbreaking panels where it's just like, you got good news right. relatively. But you're so broken down by the time you get to that point. And I think that ties in nicely to that idea of like how do you really like fully help somebody mm -hmm. going through something like that. Yeah. Yeah. To absolutely. Navigate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, was there anything else big that you guys wanted to talk about with this comic? I feel like we've hit on a lot of the major points. Mm -hmm. Or or final thoughts that you would like to share. I would like to say that um, it reminded me of this book I read called mm. No Apparent Distress by Rachel Pearson, who actually got her um, medical degree um, in Texas and worked at a clinic in Galveston. Mm -hmm. And it was an indigent care clinic, mm -hmm. but what ended up happening is she was beginning to realize that so much of the medical sphere was um, contingent, their learning was contingent on like people of color, learning on people of color, learning on poor people who mm -hmm. weren't able to access care. And so I was just thinking about that and how really doctors also are navigating being able to provide the best treatment to people. Mm. Yeah. So I was just thinking about that with cancer care as well. Mm -hmm. And um, just really, we're, there's still so much stuff out there. Um, there's you know, so many other people who can't access healthcare, yeah. what it is to access some kind of healthcare and it still isn't sufficient. Yeah. You know, it mm -hmm. still is, we're still, <coughs> it still is an experiment and yeah. it is a practice and um, there's still a lot to learn. Yeah. Really. Exactly. It's, it's one of those things like when you say with the access because and I could be completely wrong, and if I am wrong, cut this. <laughs> but, fact check it. <laughs> uh, fact check me, but because a bunch of my family is uh, diabetic, 
And the one thing I actually did not know, because like I just remember as a kid always getting dropped off, like always dropping them off to go get their dialysis, yeah. I did not realize of all presidents, Richard Nixon signed the act that every person that needed dialysis would be able to get dialysis for free. This country did a truly amazing thing. Richard Nixon did a truly, really? Wow, <laughs> history has changed. Richard Nixon did a truly amazing thing. He, he said we should take care of people with kidney disease, and we did it. And we should keep doing it, but, but we could do it a lot better. Oh, wow. Back in the 70s. Huh. Free. So that's why when you see these people that are going through dialysis, because I used to think as a kid, I'm like, how are they paying for this? Yeah. I know some of my family doesn't have it. It's because there was an act that went through, like, went through the entire bill saying mm -hmm. that if you need to get dialysis, no matter with or without health care, hmm. you will be provided that. Yeah. And yeah. to me, I'm like, so you can do that. Right. What else can you do? Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie. I think monetarily, I was just like, how much is all of this costing? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, you beat it. But it's like now here comes the next battle. Yeah. Being in crippling debt. You know, mm -hmm. going, putting this debt on your children and your yeah. children's children yeah. and passing yeah. this on kind of thing. Even though you beat one thing, there yeah. comes another thing. Yeah. And then to go back to that dialysis, and it's like, don't tell me you can't do it. Yeah. You did this. Yeah. Yeah, we actually, um, earlier we had spoken with uh, the CEO of People's Community Clinic, and she talked about that specifically, how um, you can maybe look out and get, she called it, the, the disease of the month. We have basically an incredibly disjointed system where Sometimes it's the body part, not the person, that is insured. Um, you know, so if you have breast cancer, there's some special insurance that covers the breast, but there isn't special insurance that covers colon cancer or pancreatic cancer or other cancers. I mean, if you are lucky enough to get the particular disease, or the disease of the month that has the coverage, I mean, it is an inhuman, irrational, inexplainable system. How is that a system that is effective? And in her mind, she was saying it's not an effective system. It's a very broken system. And we are the ones that are helping those people that are stuck trying to navigate that and don't have a place to go. Um, but yeah, to that point where it's just like, you can, there are systems in place for very, very specific things. But why is there not a system in place for just everything? Right. Yeah. Mm. Um, would you guys recommend this comic for people? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. Asha as well. Yeah, right. totally. Nice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, I think I would as well. I think it's um, a wonderful and very, like, as, as heavy as the conversation sounds, like, there are some very endearing and lovely moments when she gets a puppy. The puppy's adorable. <gasps> oh, he's so cute. That made me happy. Pat's really. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just so, and, like, everyone's like, should you have a puppy? And she's like, no, I, I want this dog. And, <laughs> which, yeah, fair. I would, too. But, I mean, there's just very, very lovely, very sweet moments within it. Um, I highly mm. recommend it. Uh, we found about it uh, through a site called Graphic Medicine. It is a website that is dedicated to um, uh, finding and promoting comics and graphic novels that deal with medical issues and care, trying to really shine a light on these stories and really humanize uh, these journeys that people are going on. So if you would like to see more stuff like this, definitely go to that website, check that out. Also, Mom's Cancer is online fully, so you can read it right now for free once you're done watching this. Go check it out. It is on the internet which as we discussed has changed much since 2005. So <laughs> exciting. Thank you guys again so much for joining us for Have You Read This Yet? Thank you guys so much for joining us. <laughs> this, Thank, this you. Thank you. Thank um, you. And we will see you guys next time. <laughs>